Hey guys, I'm here in the Mariposa Grove of Giant Sequoias at Yosemite. And it is beautiful. It is such a beautiful, peaceful, spiritual place. Unless there's thousands of people on tour buses here. So if you're going to do the hike, do it early. Do it at sunrise for the best experience. But uh, there's a lot of different things you can see here. You can just walk around and look at some of the interpretive displays. Or you can actually go for a hike uh, around seven miles or so, two or three hours. And you get to go through the entire uh, Mariposa Grove here, all the way up to Wawona Point where you get beautiful views out onto the valley and then come back down. So if you have the time and you think you can hike for two or three hours, I definitely recommend doing the entire hike because it's a beautiful place. And once you get away from the tourist areas, it's a much, um, much more peaceful experience as well. So if you want to do the hike, please go to hikingguy.com where I have a full guide, including turn by turn directions that you can print out maps, parking information, but otherwise, here are the video turn-by-turn -turn directions. So the hike starts at the trailhead. Now, if you come here early, you can drive right up to the trailhead. But if you come a little bit later, you have to take a shuttle bus here. So uh, just go to the website where I have all of that info listed. But you can see right away the trail starts in a very grand way. Um, if you come later, this will be jammed with people. This is actually the July 4th weekend um, at sunrise, and there's no one here, which is really... A good time to do this hike if you can. We're going to go straight up here through these interpretive displays. Pretty soon you're going to pass the tree called the Fallen Monarch, which is right there, which is over on its side. And you're just going to continue up the boardwalk. Now as you continue, we're kind of going to get away from the more touristy areas here. Then at this point here, you're going to see the root system of the Fallen Monarch, which is pretty crazy. And we're just going to go um, kind of straight bearing to the right here. And there are trail signs around here. Um, we're heading to Grizzly Giant next. Um, and, uh, you know, it can get a little confusing. So I do recommend having a map or GPX file if you um, can do that with your phone as you do the hike. Here we're going to pass another nice grove and a little interpretive center. And that little boardwalk just goes out to the middle there, but we're going to continue here and head up. Now, this is not a big mountain climb or anything, but there is some uphill for the first half. And I'll show you the section that has a little bit more later. At this point, we're going to cross the road. Now, um, they allow handicapped uh, people with their vehicles to come through here. And there's also tour buses, so just make sure you know where you're going. This is the Bachelor and the Three Graces uh, Grove right here, these four trees, which is basically... It's another word for the dating game. And they have these little signs next to the different groves, and it'll tell you what you're looking at, which is always helpful. Now, once you pass that and cross the road, you're going to head uphill a little bit. You can see the ground's a little muddy here. It can get a little muddy after rain, so just a heads up. Having hiking shoes will do you good here. When you come up here, there's a side trail to the right that comes in. If you have to go to the bathroom, you can go to the bathroom down there. But that goes down to the parking area, where people coming to see Grizzly Giant, which is straight ahead, right there, come in. So again, if you leave early in the morning, you're not gonna have any problems, but if you do this at say like two o'clock, there's probably gonna be a stream of people coming in. Now here's Grizzly Giant, one of the uh, biggest trees here. You see it's quite impressive. You can also see there's some deer down there. That's what happens when you get here early. You get to see some wildlife before it's been scared off, but pretty cool see a couple of deer in the shadows of grizzly giants and you're going to go to the left of grizzly giant and you're going to keep going around you can see some benches and once you go here we're going to kind of bear to the left here to go down to the california tunnel tree which is straight ahead and again there's another little sign for it and once we pass this tree we're going to kind of be off the grid for a little bit there's the tunnel tree and if you want to bail out you can bail out down there to the left head back to the start. We're going to go ahead and go through the tree. And once we go through the tree, the trail turns into more of a trail trail. And you're going to continue straight on the dirt trail for about five minutes or so. And eventually you're going to cross the road once again, right up here. And again, there's a sign. And once you cross over, the trail is pretty well marked here. You'll notice the road is dirt as well. In the old days, you could drive all through the grove, but when they restored it, 
a few years ago they shut the road down which is a good thing and you can see here there's another trail sign we want to continue straight here and this is probably the most remote section of the hike which is nice now there's a um, turn here we're going to make the hard left if you go right you'll be going away from all the action just Sequoia National Forest but we're going to go here we're going to start the climb. Now, this is not a big mountain climb, but it is a climb. If you're not in shape, you'll probably feel this. But if you're used to doing mountains, it won't be much of anything. And we're just going to hike up. And you can see the trail is much different at this point. It's much more of a small trail trail. And you can see it here winding up. Once we go to the top here, this will be up to what we want to point. That'll be all the climbing we'll do. And then the second half is basically all downhill. We're going to continue up here keep heading uphill and after the climb we're going to get to a big junction that we're going to go through again later and here's the junction I'm going to take you up to the main point of the junction but we're going to come back in a second here now this is the junction we're going to come back on the way back there's I don't know, five or six points here different trails it's kind of close to the uh, Gillen Clark uh, cabin which is straight ahead but we're going to, you'll see, we're going to go to the telescope tree next. And you'll see there's a trail right there to the telescope tree. There's actually two ways to go. So we're just going to go back a little bit. We're not going to go all the way to that junction. I just showed you in this video, but you don't actually have to do that. And there you can see that's the trail that we came up. And we're going to go straight to the telescope tree. And if we go this way, we're going to get some nice views down into the area that we climbed up from just before this intersection. And you can see here, it's a little bit of an uphill, but it's it's a little more gradual. It's not too bad. We're going to go up, and as you go along this ridge here, you're going to be able to see down to the right, down to all of the area that you came in. You can also see the fire damage, which is actually um, in some ways good for the sequoias because it helps them get their seeds out there and the pine cones open. But you can read all about that in the interpretive displays. We're going to go on this for about 10-15 minutes and at some point you're going to see this giant sequoia right in front of you in the middle of the trail. Now right before that we're going to make the left hand turn onto this trail and go down to the telescope tree. Now the telescope tree is cool because it is hollow um, and you can look up through the middle of it and see, uh, see out the top and I'll show you in a second here. You go inside and you look up and there's the sky. So pretty school, cool stuff. When you're done there, you're just gonna go out. We're gonna make the uh, right. So if you came down that trail, we'd make the right there. That's the trail we came down. And we're just gonna go straight on this for a little while. And after winding around a little bit, we're gonna come out to the, you can see there's a sign here. We're gonna come out to the Wolona Tunnel Tree. Also the Galen Clark Tree is gonna be up ahead as well. But here is the Wawona Tunnel Tree. Now this used to be one of the famous tunnel trees with a hole in it and people used to drive their cars through it and all that gooky stuff. But uh, it fell down and now it is just a huge tree that you can see uh, on its side. But there is this neat little interpretive display here. It's asking you not to go on there and uh, you know, use your common sense. Don't pick away at the trees or take things out. But you can read a little bit about it and see an old picture of what it used to look like. They're really good about these interpretive displays on this hike and in this part of the park. It's a little bit different than the Yosemite Valley part. And from here, we're just going to go straight. Now there's a junction straight ahead here. Uh, we're going to go straight. We're not going to go up there. And we're not going to go down to the left here. We're going to go straight. And our next stop will be the Gillen Clark tree and the... Um, we want to point road and turn off, but we're going to go straight. And when you get down here to this big junction, the Gillen Clark tree will be off to your right here. It's just another big tree. I mean, they're all beautiful. They're all in here, but you can check it out. Gillen Clark was the guardian of the grove, one of the first people who came here uh, and protected these trees. And when we get done here, we're going to go straight and kind of bear to the right. And we're going to go uphill to Wawona Point, which will be the highest point around here. And it will give us some nice sweeping views. Now, this is the old dirt road once again. And we're going to just follow the road up. It's a little uphill. And eventually, at the end, you're going to get to the split. It's a little loop, so it really doesn't matter. We're just going to go to the right because it's a little bit easier. 
I'm going to go up the final little section, and when you get to the top, you're going to get a little sign that tells you you're at Wawona Point with the elevation. And there's a couple little viewpoints here that we're going to check out because they are beautiful. So I'm just going to go straight here and then down this little stone stairway and then out to the promontory point here. And you can see there are some pretty impressive sweeping views of the Wawona Valley. You can see that little clearing down there. You can see Wawona Dome, that little clearing is right by the hotel, which you can also hike down to from here. And I think at some point they were going to build a golf course in there, or there was a golf course, but not anymore. And when we're done here, we're going to continue around the little pathway. And there's another promontory point, sorry for the shake here. And there's a neat interpretive display where it'll tell you the different peaks in the distance and what you can see. So this is a nice midway point to stop and have a snack. Chill out if you want to before we head back down. Um, but you can see here, beautiful, beautiful viewpoints. Now when you're done here, just head back to the road and you're going to pass the little radio station with the solar panels and keep heading back downhill until we get to the big intersection where we were before by the Gale and Clark tree. At this point, we're going to bear to the right. You'll see a trail off to the right here, a hard right that goes down to the Wawona area, the valley, and the hotel. We're not going to do that today. But instead, we're just going to follow the road down. And again, you can see there's some signs here telling us we're on the loop trail, we're in the right place. And we're just gonna to continue to head downhill here. And it's a nice cruisy downhill. Pretty much everything at this point will be downhill. And there's some nice sequoias here as you go down as well. It's very peaceful. You'll probably see some people coming up at this point if you've left early. But you can continue to go down and then you're gonna look for this hard left onto the big dirt road. And we're gonna go straight here and this will take us in one second or so to the Gallon Clark cabin. Now, uh, he had a cabin here back when he first came uh, over 100 years ago, I believe at this point, or almost 100 years ago. They rebuilt it in 1936, which is what you see here. And then they restored it in the 80s, I believe. There's a museum in there when it's open. And you can check that out. It's in a nice grove of these giant sequoias. But after that, we're just gonna go straight back down here and continue to head downhill. And we're going to go straight through here. We're going to pass a bathroom here, men's and women's room, primitive toilet. And we're going to go straight past the bathroom. And then there's another little trail junction here to the right that goes down to Wawona. We're not going to do that. There's the trail. Again, it's all well marked. We're going to go bare left. And this will take us back to that intersection that I showed you earlier that we came through. And here's the intersection. There's an interpretive design, uh, sign for the animals you can see. Now when we get back here, you're gonna, it's gonna look familiar. You're gonna see the path that you came up earlier off to the left, right over there. We went up to the telescope tree, but instead we're gonna go down to the right now and head back to the trailhead. Next stop will be the clothespin tree, which uh, we'll see in a second here. But this is nice. It's not uh, so busy. Most people walk up the road and they don't come up this trail, the perimeter trail. So we're going to go down here because it'll be nice and peaceful. Keep heading down. When you see this fence, I want you to look to your right and you'll see the clothespin tree, which is right down there. And we'll see it again if you keep going down here past the fence. You'll see another matching fence when you get to the bottom of the hill. And you'll get another view up to the right, a little bit closer of the clothespin tree. And after this, we're gonna go straight and we're gonna go down to the road here. And when you get down to the road, you're just gonna to bear to the left and continue heading downhill. This is all downhill, It'll feel good after the first half. Now, when you get to this fence, after a little bit of downhill, this is an important turn that you don't wanna miss. When you get to this fence on that downhill road, you're gonna make the, some younger sequoias here uh, planted for Stephen Mathers. You're gonna make the hard right. It's a trail, it's kind of hidden here, and you'll see there's the sign there, back to the Welcome Center. And we're gonna continue down here, and again, hopefully it'll be away from the crowds on this section. Continue downhill, and then there's another intersection here, and when we get to the other intersection, we're not gonna go straight to Wawona. We're gonna make the hard left, and head back down to the Welcome Center, and after 
probably 20 minutes or so of, of nice downhill hiking, you're going to start to probably hear the crowds before you see them. Um, you're going to come to the intersection here with Grizzly Giant, which is a shortcut across the left of Grizzly Giant. We're going to go down here to the shuttle bus stop, the Welcome Center, down to the right, and the trail will wind around a little bit down here. Nice little downhill, last little stretch before we get back to all the crowds. Even if you left early by this point, there'll probably be some crowds at the Welcome Center. And here you can see we're getting back to the Welcome area. We're going to cross the road once again, head back over to the boardwalk area. And you'll see the fallen monarch um, up ahead in the distance and all the interpretive displays that we saw earlier. And pretty soon you'll be back at the start of the trail, the bathrooms and the shuttle bus. And that's the loop. So that's it. That's the hike. It's a beautiful one. It is a spiritual experience here. So I highly recommend taking the time to do this entire hike. If you do want to do a shorter option, I do have some of those listed on the article. So if you're watching on YouTube, there's a link to the article right underneath the video. And if you are watching on YouTube, if you could give me a thumbs up, that will help uh, other people find the special place and do the hike safely. And um, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. But otherwise, enjoy the giant sequoias.